morning, dear students. My name is Annette van Heerden. I'm your tutor in the Diploma in Junior Primary Education, Religious, Morris, Moral and Life Skills Education 1-1. This is a content-based contact session for all examinations in 2018. I do apologize for my voice. I have a laryngitis. Um, I hope you can hear me good. Welcome to this very important module. In this unit, you will study the concept of religion and relate it to the moral values. You will understand why RME is included in the junior primary phase, as well as the syllabus aims for the phase. You will note how RME is related to other subjects in cross-curricular issues. In this presentation, I will teach the following. I will advise you on how to study. <clears throat> I will discuss the exam paper and the technical aspects thereof. For example, how to complete the cover page and the rules of your examination. I will advise you on how to answer your paper correctly. I will teach you how to use the verbs in a question to receive optimum marks. I will also <clears throat> narrow down and summarize some important parts of your study guide and I will show you how questions can be asked on these parts as well as how and when you can obtain help from me. Suggestions on how to study. Dear students, you cannot pass this subject if you do not know, how, know the content of the study guide. And you cannot start studying only one day before your examination. So, after receiving your study guide, please immediately summarize the content. Read through your summary at least once a week. About two months before the examination, start studying. And there I want to say, if you want to contact me about something, at this time, at this stage, two months before the examination, you will know the study guide a bit and contact me with the help you need. It doesn't help if you contact me a day before you are writing. Try not to study the whole content in one day. Divide it into portions that you can handle. Restudy the content on a regular basis to ensure that you remember it. Then. Please, students, do not try to write RMSL 1.1 and 1.2 in the same examination. The study guide is too huge. You cannot do two of those study guides in one examination. Rather pay enough attention to one study guide at a time in order to pass one examination. Study the work that was summarized in this content-based session very, very carefully. Use the refs that I give you to find the answers to all the questions and then study the answers. Please remember that the verbs in the questions can differ from those in the examination and remember that you need to know what to do with each verb. Study the corrected questions in your returned assignment. If you have a problem with these questions, contact me, please. I will help you. 20% of the questions in your assignment can be in your examination. This will help a lot. Study your IOL study guide or your Kindle very well because all answers will come from your study guide or your Kindle. The work in the study guide and the Kindle is the same work. So you don't have to get a study guide if you only have a Kindle, or get a Kindle if you only have a study guide. They are similar. Okay. Then your exam paper. Your paper will count 120 marks. And all questions should be answered. Read your questions with care. Make sure you know what is expected. Look at the verb in each question. Make sure you know what to do with every verb. 
the general remarks on the answering in your, of your examination. Your exam paper consists of the following. A cover page, an introduction page, and then the questions that, would, that you may, must answer. So on the cover page, the cover page is divided into a left and a right column. The left column will be filled in by the tutor when I am marking. Please do not fill in here. The right column must be filled in by you. The following headings can be found in the right column of the cover page and must be filled in by you. Please don't leave out anything. Under the heading student details, you must fill in the following information. Your CIF or your student number. Then you must fill in your surname. Then you must fill in your first name and your initials. Then your ID number. And then your examination center. The examination center is the center where you are writing at this moment. And lastly, your signature. At the bottom of the cover page, you will find general instructions under the heading general instructions. Please read through them and make sure that you understand. The first instruction will be questions should be answered on the question paper in the lines underneath each question. Students, the question paper paper with, will look as follows. There will be a question and underneath the questions there will be enough lines for you to answer the question. Number two, answer all the questions. Don't leave out one question. Number three, use the mark allocation for each question as a guide for how many facts you should write down. It is best to number the facts underneath each other. So if you have a question, look at the mark. Maybe the question counts out of 10 marks. Then know that you must give me 10 facts. So try to write down 10 facts. Do not write down 20 facts because I will only mark the first 10. The, number four, write neatly and legibly. If I cannot read what you wrote, then I cannot allocate marks to you. Please, students, some of you have a very nice handwriting, but you form your letters in a way that no one can make out what you wrote. Please write neatly and clearly. This paper consists of eight pages, including the cover page, Count the pages and make sure that they are all there before you start writing. And number six, no cheating or disturbing. Serious steps will be taken against anyone who cheat or who disturbs an examination session. <coughs> On the second page, you will have a heading saying examination instructions. These instructions will be as follow. No unauthorized material or irregularities. This means you may not take in the exam room any material that has anything to do with this subject. Number two, no asking for or giving any assistance. You may not ask for help from your peer next door. You may not give any assistance to your peer that sits next to you. Number three, and this is very, very important. No cell phones will be allowed in the examination room. This is because answers can be saved on your phone. And students can use the phones to help them answer questions. Therefore, no phones will be allowed. No one will be allowed to leave the room in the first 30 minutes of the examination. Number five is very important. 
no late arrivals will be allowed into the examination room. Make sure that you are on time. Make sure that you set your alarm and be there maybe 10 or 15 minutes prior to your examination time. The question paper or answering paper is the property of IOL and may not be kept or parts thereof removed in any way. You cannot keep the paper because you must write your answers on the paper. But even if you decide not to give in the paper and rewrite your exam next time, you may not keep the question paper. It is IOL property, if you keep it, that will be stealing. All answers should be on the IOL pages. No smoking and no eating will be allowed in the examination room. And number nine, this is very, very important. Make sure that you sign the checklist that will be in the examination room. Do not leave before you sign the checklist. Students, <clears throat> I want to tell you how to answer a very good exam paper. Firstly, study your IOL study guide or your Kindle very well. All answers come from this. There are no questions from any other material than your study guide or your Kindle. Then, secondly, do not think that my marking can help you pass your examination. For instance, do not send me an SMS or a WhatsApp asking me, please ma'am, help me to pass. I cannot help you pass. I mark according to a memorandum and my work is being moderated. I cannot give you marks when the correct facts is not written down. And if I, for some other reason, attempt to do so, the moderator will take away the marks again. So please, I cannot help you pass. I can only mark the correct facts. Only you can help yourself pass the work the examination by knowing your works, your work. Read the questions in the paper until you understand what is asked. Lots of students do not understand what is asked in the questions and then they do not give the correct answers. <clears throat> Next, when I say answer in your own words, it means Construct the correct facts from your study guides into your own words. This does not mean make up your own facts and stories to write down. You have to use the facts but just reform them into your own words. While doing this, make sure you do not lose some of the important facts of a specific question. So, to avoid this, list and number the facts underneath each other wherever possible. Please number wherever it is possible, but you cannot list a number when you are asked to write an essay, because an essay is like a story. Then you cannot number it underneath each other. It must be in paragraphs. Okay. Also remember, an essay has an opening paragraph, a content, content, and a closing paragraph. Understanding how to answer a question. Every exam paper is set in three levels of difficulty. Level 1, 2, and 3. These levels are usually indicated by the specific verb that leads the question. In the front part of your study guide or your Kindle, you will find a list of verbs and an explanation of what is expected of you when I use the specific verb. You will have to study this list or you will lose marks when not knowing what to do. The levels in your exam paper is divided as follows. Level 1 counts 60% of the paper. 
Level 2 counts 30% of the paper and Level 3, 10% of the paper. Now, how to use the verbs in your answer? Um, I'm now going to give you a list of the verbs that I most commonly use. In Level 1, I mostly use the verbs list and name. Then you should only name or list the content. The other verbs define, give a definition, describe, give a description, outline, also a description, explain, an explanation, summarize, give a, summarize, a summary, or identify, that means just look for the answer. Just with these verbs, just give the description or the explanation that you studied in your study guide. Nothing else is necessary. With level one verbs, only the facts from your study guide. But with the level two verbs, here we need more than the facts of your study guide. Remember with level two, do not leave out the facts from your study guide. Just add to the facts of your study guide. The verbs most commonly used is discuss, analyze, comment, examine, design, create, investigate, or demonstrate. With these verbs, you must still use the facts from your study guide, but some other actions is also needed. For example, when I use the verb discuss, you give a clear description of the facts. You put down the facts and then give a small argue about the facts, a discussion about the facts. Discuss each fact in your own words. In examine, you also must identify the de detailed features of something. You give the facts. And then you also give a discussion of them according to a given direction and then draw a conclusion. Please students use the list in your study guide and find out what you will have to do with every verb that I mentioned above. In level three, there's a bit more to do than in level two. Level two. The first verb, evaluate, it means you need to determine the value or the worth or the quality or the success of something according to a certain criteria. First, give the facts and then evaluate. Compare, this means indicate the similarities or the resemblances and the differences of the phenomena regarding to a particular criteria. Draw a conclusion about the similarities and the differences by emphasizing the similarities. similarities. In compare, it is very often I ask you to use a table to compare the phenomena. For instance, you put the resemblances on one side of the table, table and you put the differences on the other side of the table. Then the conclusion you write at the bottom of the table. If you are asked to compare some facts to your class, make sure that you put the facts on one side of the table and indicate which of these facts you have found in your class on the other side of the table, the left side and the right side. Dear students, if you don't have a class yet, make sure that you get a, tutor, a teacher in a nearby school with whom you can discuss the work and you can discuss the content of your study guide. The next verb, discuss critically. When you see the verb discuss critically, please know that you have to provide a positive and the negative points and then draw a conclusion. With discuss critically, use the facts given but divide them into the positive and the negative. And at the bottom, then give a 
conclusion. So when I ask you to discuss critically, I will look for posit the word positive and then some facts. Then the word, ne word negative and then some facts. And then I, want, I will look for the word conclusion and a little conclusion. When I use the verb determine, you use the given information or facts and then work out the answer because the answer will not be clear. Use the facts and then from the facts work out an answer. Distinguish or differentiate or contrast. Describe the two phenomena or things according to a relevant criteria and clearly point out the differences between the two sets of facts. So, dear students, this shows you that it is very important that you know what to do with all the verbs. For, as, not knowing will cause you losing valuable marks. In the level 2 and level 3 questions, some, a part of the marks for the question will be given to the facts. But a huge amount of marks will be given to the action that you give towards the facts. And this action you get from the verb. So please study the list of verbs. Now I want to lift out some important parts to the study guide that you need to, in the study guide that you need to study. Please, in every part that I'm going to give to you, use the ref that I give and find the answers. For example, number 1.2.2 is heading number 1.2.2 in your study guide. Make sure that you only look for the answers to these questions in your study guide or your Kindle. The verbs indicated what is expected in each question will be in bold. Go see your study guide again to know what is expected when using each verb. Also try to apply different verbs to the same question that I'm going to give you. I indicated the level of the verb in this summary. But remember, if the verb change, the level will also change. And I may formulate the question in another, with another verb in the examination. So you at home try to apply different verbs to each question in the summary. You can expect some open-ended open questions like one of the learners in your class is, a very, is very aggressive or I can put in any other behavior. Discuss what you as a teacher will do to help and support this child to overcome this kind of behavior. Here you can use practical ideas to motivate your action. You will receive march, marks for every relevant support and every relevant motivation. This is an open-ended question. For this question, the student's view is evaluated and a definite, reasonable, reasonable motivation should be given. To use as basis to answer, you can see number 2.2.5 in the study guide. We can probably or safely say that personal values that affect your health and happiness and that of the people close to you negatively are unacceptable values. So this handles on unacceptable personal values. Then there are personal values that are acceptable until they are driven too far and start affecting our relationships and consequently our happiness and our health. They then become unacceptable. Again, unacceptable personal values. Examples of such values are ambition, attitude, achievement, power, 
risk taking, success and wealth. This is only a few of them. Short questions such as the following can be asked from work throughout your study guide. It will look like, look like this. Fill in the correct answers. Auditory learners learn through. Then you must fill in. Tactile learners learn through. Fill in the answer. Visual learners learn with. Answer. When assessing learners in the pre-primary phase, a three-point assessment scale is used and the three means what? The verb to this question is fill in, which is only a level one verb and you can only give the answers. Also, NM in your evaluation or is assessment stands for what? on the assessment scale used in the pre-primary phase and means that the learner this is not master and the learners did not master the basic competencies. The, the sixth, at the end of the term the marks for each component is added and the average mark in each of the component columns is calculated by doing the following here you must write down the mathematical um, uh, 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 sum that you do when you add the, and want to work out the average marks. <clears throat> now other important parts in your question, uh, in question form. Please remember for level 3 question, any of the verbs in the questions can be replaced with any of the following level three verbs. Discuss critically, evaluate, compare or argue about and there are lots of more level three verbs but these are the most important. Your answer will then differ from the level two answer in that some additional actions must be added to the original facts. Please make sure in your study guide of what you should, should do when finding these verbs. Okay, in unit one, in heading number 1.1.1, here you can have a level one question. Explain or define the following terminology. Convictions, divine, reverence, transcending. You must just give an explanation of what the word means. Heading 1.2.3, a level 2 question because the C, the bold word, discuss, this is the level 2 verb. Discuss the overall reasoning for including RME in the junior primary school curriculum in Namibia. Carefully Consider the implications of the rational. Here the verb discuss can also be changed with describe to make it a level 1 or with discuss critically to make it a level 3 question. In heading number 1.1.3 a level one question to understand the different beliefs in the supernatural we must look at some concepts about the belief in God <clears throat> then define the following concepts define is a level one verb so you just tell me what this word means a definition define definition means what does this mean? Theistic God, theism, atheism, agnosticism, and religion. Number 1.2.1, 1. level 1. Define the following concepts in your own word. 
define again a level one, holistic and integrity. Number one, point twelve, point four. Here is a level two question. Name, this is the level one uh, verb, and debate, this is the level two verb. Name and debate at least 12 principles and practices that guides the teaching of morals to young children. Heading number 1.3.3, level 3. Evaluate the aims of RME in the junior primary phase in Namibia to, to determine the success thereof. Good. Evaluate is the level 3 mark. So here, you write down the facts, the aims of RME in the junior primary phase. And then, you determine the success of each aim in your own words. Extra marks will be awarded for the evaluation or the determination. But the evaluation must be on the success, how this aim will be successful in the junior primary phase in Namibia. Okay, now number 1.8.8.1 or learning activity 1.8.8.1. This is a level 2 question. I ask you in table form. So now you have to draw some tables on your answering paper. In table form, compare the relation between religion and each of the following morals, values, principles, and rules. Okay, you must have a column for the morals, a column for the values, a column for the principles and a column, column for rules. And then you must also have a column for religion. And you must compare religion with each of the following. In unit 2, go to un heading number 2.1.3. There you can find a level 1 question. Define the following concepts, idea, attitude, and behavior. In number 2.1.4, a level 2 question, analyze the influence that values have on attitudes, ideas, and behavior. So you must give an analyzation for the level 2 part of the question. Get the facts and then analyze each. In heading number 2.2.2, .2 level 1, define the following two concepts in your own words. Give any two symptoms of each. Accountability, this means answerability, responsibility of dependability. You just name two of these. Perseverance, that means determination, persistence, or endurance, any of the two. And aspire, that means seek, desire, or want. This is very easy. Now heading number 2.2.3, level 1. Explain the concept personal values, including good personal values. This is only a level one verb explain, explain. But this can be given with a level two verb that says discuss or criticize. Or I can put in a level three verb that say discuss critically. Then other actions have to be taken. In heading number 2.3.4, a level 1 question that states, 
The following is a list of positive children behaviors. Fill in the value of each behavior next to the relevant behavior. So here I will give you a list of behaviors and I will ask you to fill in the value in table form next to the relevant behavior. Only level one from facts from your study guide. Heading number 2.5.4, a level two question. Explain the main laws and rules and values as we find it in the Namibian society. And then, examine the importance of living according to these values, laws and rules. So firstly, level one verb, explain. You write down the main laws, the rules, and you write down the values as we find it in the society. And this you will find in your study guide. But then, examine the importance of, e of living according to these values, laws, and rules. So with every value, law, or rule, you must examine each important, e importance of living. And that will give you the marks for level two. In heading number 2.5.5, a level one question again, only name and describe the important values which, when taught to children, can make a significant difference towards the betterment of a community. I can also rephrase the question into level two, name and discuss, or name and evaluate. So, please note that, that other verbs can be put in the place of the verb describe. Number 2.8.4.2, level 1. When showing respect for the rights and opinions of others. The first one, describe, level 1, how every person should start this process of respecting and protecting these rights. And number two, list four ways in which respect for the opinions of others can be shown. Clear and forward a level one question. In unit three, number 3.1.4.2, level two, <clears throat> demonstrate how the following negative feelings can have a positive outcome in life. Sadness, despair, anger, fear, and shyness. So you take every one of these negative feelings and you demonstrate how each can have a positive outcome in life. And that will give you the level two answer. In number 3.1.4.3, a level three question, discuss critically how positive feelings can have a life-changing effect on someone's life. A critical discussion on each feeling as well as the conclusion will receive marks. So how do you discuss critical? You divide the facts in a positive and a negative. So each fe positive feeling, you give what is the positive about it and you give about the, the, what is the negative about this feeling. Students, remember, the positives in a positive feeling can, will always be more than the negative. Maybe there will only be one negative point about it. Okay. And then when discussing all the female, uh, feelings at the end, you give a conclusion on this. Number 3.2.3, .3, level one. Define only the de definition, definition, what do you understand under emotional intelligence or EI? 
What do you know? Of what what is emotional intelligence? That's all, and that's only level one. Number three point three point three and three point three point four, and also in the learning activity three point three point one. This is a level three question. In table form, so here you have to draw a table. Compare six features of people with emotional high emotional intelligence or high EI to those with low EI. Please students, remember if I ask you to compare the uh, feature, the same feature of high intelligence must be next to the same one of the low intelligence. For example, people of high emotional intelligence like to associate with other people and people of low emotional intelligence do not like to associate with other people. Put the two, the similar feature against each other in the columns. Okay? Now, number 3.4.4.1 This can be a level 1 or the, <coughs> a level 2 question. Describe the following three leadership styles identified by Daniel Goleman. This can also be discuss, then it's level two, or discuss critically, then it's level three. The coaching leader, the democratic leader, and the commanding leader. Just describe or discuss or discuss critically each. In heading number 3.8.5, level 2, to manage our personal stress, we should learn and practice skills on a deep emotional level, and in doing so, we will raise our EI. Discuss seven ways to manage personal stress under the following headings, and then I will give you the headings. So go to number 3.8.5 and there you will find the headings and the ways to manage personal stress. Then give a discussion on each. Number 3.9, paragraph 9.2 and 9.3. This is a level 1 question. To resolve conflicts, we need to listen, to hear, and to understand one another in the conflict situation. Clarify this statement. Clarify means explain. Explain why we need to listen, hear, and understand each other in a conflict situation. In Unit 4, number 4.1.3, this can be a Level 1 or a Level 2 question. I use the verb discuss, but, but it can also be describe. What is understood under the term nutrition? So it's only a definition or a discussion thereof. Number 4.1.4, .4, level 1. Name the five food groups that you should consume every day. Only name the food groups. Number 2. Describe how to measure a moderate size portion of food to eat per plate. Description in your study guide. Number three, describe how to maintain healthy, careful, and moderate drinking habits. Number 4.12.3. 4.12.3.1.1 and 0.1.2. This can be a level 1 and a level 2 question. The first part is level 2. Discuss how a competent teacher would exhibit appropriate working habits and behavior, including the headings work ethics, professionalism in teaching, competence, performance, and professional conduct. Conduct. Here you use the different headings and discuss how a teacher will use each of these headings 
to have a positive behavior in the teaching. Number two, list the general characteristics of professionalism that such a teacher should display in a workplace or the school. Now unit five, number 5.1.3, level one. When presenting a RME lesson, certain basic competencies should be met and certain learning activities should take place, which requires appropriate resources and practical materials. In table form, name and describe four activities and the matching practical materials or resources you will use when presenting the theme myself during a RME class. In the third column, show where the basic competencies are applicable. Place the activity, the matching material resource and the basic competency next to each other, giving each the same number. Also, students, I can use another theme in your examination. There are lots of themes. Here, I, I said use the theme myself, but I can also use the theme school, or I can use the theme animals. Any of the relevant themes, I can ask you to name the activities, give their matching materials, and next to that, show which basic competencies are applicable. <clears throat> Note, use your own ideas and do not use those discussed in the study guide. In this question, I want you to show me that you will know what to do in your classroom. Next, heading number 5.8.2.1 also point 2.2 and 2.3. This is a level one question. You are planning an RME lesson under the theme water. Seems, themes can differ. I can use any theme here. And you should te teach the specific competencies through which learning and teaching activities are used appropriate resources and practical materials. First, name the basic competencies that should be mastered. Two, in table form, plan the activities that your learners will participate in. This should, be, should include at least three stories from the Bible where water plays a significant role and in the adjacent column providing each with the appropriate resource or material that will be used to get these three stories. Number 5.10.3, level one. In your classroom, you will find many different, different personalities. Shortly discuss these personalities. There's a lots of personalities. I can also only give like four of the personalities and ask you to discuss these four, or I can give 10 personalities, ask you to discuss these 10, or I can only tell you, discuss any six, or I can say, discuss them all. The question may differ. In learning at unit six, in learning activity 6.10, Point two, level one. This one is very, very important. Describe how informal assessment should be done in a grade one classroom. You should know how to do informal assessment. Number 6.10.5, also level one. When using the six point grading scale, competency descriptions are allocated to each grade. Clarify the full meaning of each description. As you know, the descriptions is achieved very well, achieved well, achieved satisfactory. You must give me 
the full meaning of what very well means or what well means or what satisfactory means. Please study these meanings. <clears throat> Students, that is all the work that you should study. Now, if you failed the previous exam, make sure that you obtain a report on what you did wrong from the IOL officers. Please note, the report is not on your specific paper. I cannot write a report for 700 stu students separately. But the report is on what went wrong in general. I sent my report to IOL officers, but if you do not obtain it from the office, you can also send me an email and ask for the report. Please use the references provided with each question, that means the heading numbers, and find the answers to each of the above questions and study them from, for your examination. If you have a question you would like to ask me, it is best to mail it to me at vanierdenfam at gmail.com and I can give you a well-constructed answer. Please, students, don't ask me to give you the facts to a question. You should first look for the facts yourself and then ask me to help you with the forming of the facts. When emailing me, and this is very important, please name your course code and your subject code, code like RMLS. Please remember I tutor in different courses and different subjects. Due to poor cell phone reception, phoning me might not have the same positive result as an email. But when you must phone me, please adhere to the following calling times. Mondays to Thursdays from 9 in the morning to 8 in the evening. Fridays only from 9 to 13. No calls will be answered during weekends as I spend weekends on the farm with very poor reception. Also, please note that the tutors do not work in the IOL office. We are part-time workers and work at our homes. We cannot help you with any administrative problems. <clears throat> I can only help you with problems concerning your subject con content. I wish you the best of luck for your examination. 